Hey what is up everybody, in today's video you are going to learn how to use some of the most important angular directives like ng4, ngif etc and how to use pipes. Before we begin, if you are here for the first time, consider subscribing for learning more about web development and activate your bell notifications, so when I upload a new video you will get notified. If you are ready, let's get started. A directive is basically an attribute special for Angular that extends HTML. There are built-in directives in Angular starting with the ng prefix like ng4, ng if, ng template and so on, but we can also define our own directives. The main types of directives are structural directives which can change the layout of the page by adding and removing DOM elements. The second type is attribute directives, which change the appearance or behavior of an element, a component or other directives. And there are also custom directives that we can design and use them customly. But this is a more advanced stuff and I won't cover them in this video. Now let's go back to our project and see how to use the structural and attribute directives. Okay, so this is our component from the last video. Suppose that we have an area of numbers and we would like to render it. When we go back to the template, we can call the array with interpolation. But the problem here is that it renders the complete array. Instead of doing that, we can print all of the elements of the array one by one in a list. How would we do that in JavaScript? By using the for loop, right? The for loop would traverse the elements of the array one by one until the end. Similarly, in Angular, by using the ng4 directive, we can traverse the array and also we can generate additional DOM elements or HTML tags in the template. So let's do that. Firstly, I define an unordered list, for example, and take the interpolation value inside of it. Okay. Next, here inside the li tag, I'm defining the ng4 directive, because as I said before, we can extend the HTML tags with directives, and to define the ng4 directive, Firstly, we need to put here asterisk characters because it's a structural directive and then type ng4. This equals the numbers array itself, but here we need to define a new variable, let number of numbers, for example. Finally, inside the interpolation, I call the variable numbers and let's see. Exactly, so the ng4 directive generates new list items as many as they exist inside the array. So as you can see here is only one li tag, but with the ng4 directive, it generates new list items as many as they exist inside the array. Our next structural directive is ngif. We can use ngif for conditional rendering. Now, if we delete the elements here, there is only a white page. To prevent this, we can give here additional information when there is no elements inside the array. For example, we can show here a text like no data when there are no elements inside the array and render this only if there are no elements inside the array. Let's delete this. So again, the asterisk character ng if shows the list here if there is at least one element inside the array and if not then hide this one and show this text here. Okay, now there are elements inside the array. Looks like it's working. Let's also test it with an empty array. So let's delete this one here. And as we can see, this time the text appears here. And if I take the elements back, the text is gone and the elements are dashed. So this is how the ngif directive works and how we can use it for conditional rendering in Angular. Now let's move on with some examples for the attribute directives. In Angular, we can also change the style or appearance of an element by using directives and the ng class directive is a good example for that. For example, let's change this text color to, to another one. Now I define a standard CSS class, text red, color red, and another class for green. Now we can also use these classes conditionally. For example, if a case is true, then the text color will be red, otherwise it will be green. So let's define here a boolean variable, is green, for example, and assign it to true. 
Now if the boolean case is green is true, our text will be green, otherwise it will be red. And we can use the ng class directive to do that. So I need to define here ng class and this time without the asterisk character because it's not a structural property. But I need to take this inside brackets because of the property binding, which I will explain in the following video. Just for now, know that brackets binds the ng class directive to our component. All right, now we, I need to define the condition here. So if our is green variable is true, the ng class is going to use text green class, otherwise text red. Okay, now our text is green. Now for testing, I, I am changing this boolean variable to false and now it should be red. Exactly, as we can see, now our text has turned into red. So by using the ng class attribute, we can bind variables to our CSS classes and also use multiple CSS classes conditionally. It's very useful. There are also other directives in Angular, but they work basically the same as either structural or attribute. I can't cover all of them in a single video, but if you got the idea how they work, then you will be able to work easily also with the other directives. Now let's move on with pipes. What pipes do is that they transform data to various forms before it is rendered. They don't transform the actual data, by the way. They only let a change how it is being represented on the view. We can transform strings, numbers, date, currency, and much more things by using pipes. For example, we can transform this text here to complete lowercase or uppercase. And to do that, inside the string interpolation, we need to put firstly a pipe operator and then its type lowercase. And let's see. Now the text is completely lowercase. We can also print it uppercase. And now our text is completely uppercase. We can also define currency types and change the type of the currency. So let's define a currency here, like cash 199. And now let's render it, cash. And now let's use the currency pipe, currency. And now it's $199. By the way, the default currency type is dollars. We can also euro, for example. And to do that, we need to define its euro type. And as we can see, now it's euro. Let's give one more example, this time for the date object. We can also transform date by using uh, the pipes in Angular. So let's define a new date here from the date object and change this to date and delete this. Okay, now as we can see, here is our date object. And now I can use a pipe to shorten it. Again, the pipe operator. And to shorten it, let's write date here. So this is the pipe name. And now it's a shorter date. Let's see it for a much shorter date, short date. And now it's even shorter. So this is the date pipe. And you can find much more about the pipes on the official documents. I'm not going to cover all of them. Before closing, there is one more super important directive, which is the ng model. The ng model directive is being used for data binding, which we will talk about in the following video. If you find this video useful, please hit the like button. Thank you guys for watching and see you in the next video.